No Thank doubt you, about it. Four minutes after the hour, let's bring in Mark Levin, host of Life, Liberty, and Levin. Mark, this day wasn't unexpected, but you think totally unnecessary. What do you, I, we have not spoken, I'm not here, you heard you speak out again about this indictment. What stands out to you? All right, well, give me a few minutes because now you're going to hear me unravel some of this crap. <laughs> Let me read something to you. 18 United States Code, Section 2384. That's the seditious conspiracy statute. Why isn't that in this prosecutorial document? I remember on this network and other networks, they said it was a slam dunk. Seditious conspiracy it was in all the media. If two or more persons in any state or territory or in any place subject to the jurisdiction of the United States conspire to overthrow, put down, or to destroy by force the government of the United States, or to levy war against them, or to oppose by force the authority thereof, or by force to prevent, hinder, or delay the execution of any law of the United States, or by force to seize, take, or possess any property of the United States, contrary to the authority thereof, they shall each be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. Mr. Prosecutor, I notice this isn't in your, your bill of particulars. Why is that? And why is it that the media is not saying he wasn't charged with a slam dunk charge? Why? Because he didn't commit that act. Let's go to the next one. Remember this one? 18 U.S. Code, Section 2383. Rebellion or insurrection. Isn't January 6th Insurrection Day? Well, whoever incites, sets on foot, assists, or engage in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof, or gives aid or comfort thereto, shall be fined under this title, or in prison not more than 10 years or both, and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. He's not charged with insurrection. So what the hell is he charged with? Why do we even have this document? Well, let's go through it. Let me educate you, Bill Barr. You're making a fool of yourself on CNN and everywhere else now. You should take your personal animus out of this and stand up for the country and the rule of law because they're destroying our electoral system, as I'll explain in a second. Let's look at these four charges. You know what they had to do? They had to go to back to a statute that was first passed in 1871. It was called the Ku Klux Klan Act, post-Civil War. Why was this passed? It was passed because Ulysses S. Grant was chasing down the Klan in the South to destroy it. And when the Democrats took over the House of Representatives, they cut off his funding so the Klan survived. Reconstruction was destroyed because the Democrat Party is evil. Let me go on. Mr. Attorney General, count 18-2, 18, 18 U.S.C. Section 1512K. Count 3 is tied to that, also 1512. What is this? These are statutes that were passed in 2002. You know what they're called? The Enron Statutes to fill a gap that, was, that they felt need to be applied because they didn't have what was necessary to charge certain executives with obstructing justice. This has nothing to do with what took place on January 6th or before January 6th or after January 6th. This matter that they have used against protesters on January 6th is extremely controversial and the Supreme Court hasn't decided it yet. But cases are going to the Supreme Court on these counts. Hmm. How dare this prosecutor use these statutes against the former president of the United States? Then we have count one, 18 U.S.C. 371, cheating the government, interfering with legitimate government authority. This was aimed at financial fraud, federal contractors, others who were ripping off the federal government. This indictment, Mr. Barr, hmm. is crap. And the reason they didn't bring insurrection and seditious conspiracy is because there was no insurrection and seditious conspiracy. I'm not done. I want to say something to Mike Pence, who's turned out to be quite the weasel. Mike Pence fought like hell. He didn't want to testify in front of this grand jury. He didn't want to give his notes to this grand jury. Now we know why. He's scribbling them down in the meeting. Well, he had to give them up. Then he gives them up, and now he comes out. He's like, uh, all of a sudden, he's a drama queen. I said no, no, because his notes are in there. He's flipped completely. And I stopped a constitutional crisis. You did? Well, regardless of your opinion of what he did, you want to read about presidential elections that had constitutional consequences? 
Read about the election of 1800, which was incredibly controversial. Read about the election involving uh, uh, Adams and uh, Jackson. Incredibly controversial, almost cost the Civil War. Read around about the election in 1860, where Abraham Lincoln got 39% of the vote, and how controversial that was, leading eventually to the Civil War. Read about the election of 1876, where there were dual electors sent by multiple southern states, where the candidate who received the most electoral college votes and the biggest popular vote, the election was taken from him. Read about these elections. The election of 2000. So here's my question to the three of you. What are the rules now? What now are the rules for running, challenging, and disputing elections, and who decides? When can a candidate rely on legal advice? We actually have lawyers who are now indicted for giving legal advice the government disagrees with. Is a president not free to discuss decisions about the elections with his vice president? Right. Vice president is free to do whatever he wants, as this vice president did. Is a president free to publicly dispute election results without being indicted? Oh, he knew he lost, but he said he didn't lose. So what? Either way, it doesn't matter. The electoral process is now not purely political. In our Constitution, it's purely political. You know who ultimately decides elections? Congress. The electors go to Congress. Congress mm -hmm. decides who's in, who's out. If there's two slates, Congress decides. Congress gets to gather all the evidence at once. It's done it for 247 years yeah. up to this indictment. Now all of a sudden, a department that didn't exist when the Constitution was written, U.S. attorneys who didn't exist, special counsel who didn't exist, right. even judges that didn't exist, they are now going to look back with 2020 hindsight and decide if what a president says is appropriate, if they think it's false, what the hell is going on here? I will tell you what the hell is going on here. This guy, Jack Smith, has now destroyed our electoral system. Nobody knows the rules of the game. Nobody knows when challenges can be made or cannot be made. Now they're going to figure out what, they're, what you're thinking and what you believe and so forth. And Bill Barr goes on that crap network, CNN, and he talks about, well, you have the right to speak. There is the freedom of speech, but you don't have a right to to say things in a conspiracy. Conspiracy to what? Right. So he'll be on Mar with to Martha. What? Yeah, he'll be on with Martha today. So Mark, a couple of things. Well, congratulations. I, I, He's but, everywhere. But I want you to hear I want you to hear what Joe Biden said last year and tell me if you think this applies. Listen. We just have to demonstrate that he will not take power um, by uh, if we uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he uh, under the legitimate efforts of uh, our constitution does not become the next president again. You think this applies? Message sent, message received. But I think the, uh, the mob boss who runs the Department of Justice is already well aware of what his job is. Now, how do we know that? Every single indictment has been approved by the Attorney General of the United States, every single one of them. This special counsel was picked because he was close to Eric Holder, he was close to Jim Comey, he was close to Andrew Weissman. This isn't an independent operation. I explained it on my show Sunday. All they did is they took the worst actors under the Obama-Biden-Holder administration. They set them apart, called them special counsel. They have up to 60 FBI agents and pro 60 FBI agents and prosecutors. He brought in his old chums from the public integrity section, another buddy from The Hague. He was sent to The Hague. It's not like, can I go to The Hague? He was so bad, he was sent overseas. This man has been um, reversed by three separate juries. He was reversed by an 8-0 Supreme Court. As I explained on Sunday, he takes these statutes that don't even apply. He takes statutes and he rewrites them. He knows that he's in Washington, D.C. He's got a grand jury in Washington, D.C. Right. He's got the worst radical left-wing Obama judge in America. Somehow gets the case. She's in charge of the case. He could indict Trump for drinking too much orange juice, and everybody would say, great, he's not above the law. Let me tell you something else. This case in Florida, this documents case, where you also have former federal prosecutors and others telling me, that's a serious mm. case. That is an unserious case. And there are motions to be filed here. He brought that case in Washington, D.C., in the wrong venue purposely. 
He wanted to indict Trump in Washington with Democrat grand jurors. And then he says, oh, by the way, we're moving the case to Florida. Under federal Department of Justice guidelines for prosecutors, you are not allowed to do that. That's motion number one. The president of the United States had his attorney crime privilege stolen from him by another Obama judge who worked for Pat Leahy for 10 years. That's motion number two. Motion number three. One of the top prosecutors in this office is accused of extorting defense counsel for a co-defendant of President Trump by waving a federal judgeship in front of him if he could get his client to turn state's evidence. That's motion number three. And then we have a general warrant. There are more motions that Trump's lawyers can file. I assume they will file. So when you have people come on these airwaves and other, oh, that's a slam dunk, uh, you know, documents. And then step back, America. You charged a president with 37 counts involving documents in the middle of an election where he's the likely Republican nominee, and in there you never mention the Presidential Records Act. It's called the Presidential Records Act, not the Hillary Clinton Records Act, for a reason. That is the controlling law, and the prosecutor doesn't even use it. This guy is sleazy. He's destroying our republic. He's destroyed our electoral system. I am telling you three right now, Nobody knows what the rules of the game are now when it comes to an election. And Mike Pence, you're a disgrace for what you're doing right now. Of course you objected to what you were told. And you did what you thought was right. That's the way the system is supposed to work. It worked. The system worked. And now we have the Biden administration sitting back and saying, well, who can we indict? And they looked, and they looked hard, and they had the January 6th committee. And you had people on the January 6th committee right. who should be apologizing to America. They said a sedition. They said insurrection. There's no sedition. There's no insurrection. How could there be? The President of the United States said, hey, uh, Nancy, you want 10,000 armed National Guardsmen to protect Capitol Hill? No, we don't. It would be a bad look. We don't want to do that. How can you run an insurrection when you're offering 10,000 armed army troops to encircle the Capitol and protect it. Oh, and of course, they leave out that phrase, peacefully protest. They didn't find, and I told you guys this months ago, not a syllable of evidence that Donald Trump was involved in overthrowing the government in an insurrection or anything else. As a matter of fact, right. he left office when he was supposed to leave office. That's what he did. They went after him before he was elected. They went after him when he was elected. They went after him in four years of his presidency. They're going after him now. And this is a disgrace to the whole country. Well, the next indictment will be, uh, you know, revealed and whatnot coming up eight hours from right now. Mark, thank you very much. It's always uh, great to get your right. point of view. It's the right point of view. God okay. bless you. Thank you, right. Mark. God right. bless you. And look forward to your book work. coming out in September. Yeah, the Democratic Party hates America. And he mentioned his show on Sunday, Life, Liberty, and Levin, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on the Fox News Channel. All right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.